everyone, my name is Anya. I'm the nurse who's going to perform basic technique on how to do cardiovascular and peripheral vascular examination. Okay, first we're gonna start with the cardiovascular examination. So I'm gonna start the examination by assessing your JVP or your jugular vein, venous, venous pressure and your carotid artery by convention. Okay, so you always wanna start on the right side of the patient so that you can easily see the veins and the arteries. So Kai, I would have you look at your left side so we can easily see the, uh, the JVP. So you usually cannot see the internal, the internal jugular vein if you can see, you can use some gentle lighting to take a look at the JVP. Um, you can actually see in the suprasternal notch, which is this one, and not in the neck. You could rotate the head of the bed or um, lay it flatter in a more supine position to see if the JVP pulsation uh, moves up to the lower half of the neck, which is in this side. Since Kai um, pulsation is just right above the supra, supra sternal notch, um, this is like a good ideal way to like see it. So I will grab two tools. One is a one is just a flat card, and the other one is just like a ruler to measure a uh, horizontal uh, to measure the highest point of the point of pulsation. So as you can see, this is um, this is where the JVP is. And so I will just put the edge of the card and just like measure it. So it's 1.5. So in a normal patient, um, under three centimeters is normal. Kai is 1.5, so it's within the normal limits. So the next step is to assess the carotid, car carotid pulse. Again, have the patient look straight. Okay, thank you, thank you, Kai. You want to avoid the higher aspect of the, the neck, which is this side. You would always want to inspect in the middle, mid part of the neck. If you massage the carotid sinus, it can cause a reflected drop of the blood pressure and heart rate. So you don't want, so you want to avoid the upper half of the neck. You may need to displace the sternocleidomastoid muscle in order to feel it. So you can palpate it right there, and you can also palpate the other side. but not, si not both or simultaneously as you can cut the, the um, oxygen going to the brain. So um, now you will feel si as if the cut of the blood flow to the brain, so pumping the one side while you're palpating, and then you are looking and feeling the amplitude and the upstroke should be brisk. If you are listening to the heart while you are feeling the carotid upstroke happens right after the S1 and the S2. This is helpful if the heart rate is really fast and you can differentiate the S1 and the S2 while you are listening. You could also listen for the carotid pulsation and you can identify which is S1 and which is S2. So I will use a stethoscope and listen over the carotid artery for ruids. This is <coughs> important to do in someone who's middle aged or older. Anybody that you have you suspect to have a cerebral vascular disease. And if you feel the thrill as part of the assessment when you are palpating, is to feel the thrill when like it's like a purring of the cat. And you can feel the vibration that would make you feel the need to assess for ruids. Then listen with the both of your belt and the diaphragm of your stethoscope. 
Again, you should listen to both sides, not just one. radiates a lot of times it will radiate to the to the neck and you may mistake it as what you think is a bruit but it is usually actually a cardiac murmur so make sure that you listen well over the cardiac structures to see if that is where the murmur is so the next part of the examination is to focus in the pericardium and the cardiac function so inspection is always um, the start of the examination so first i will inspect the patient's chest for ventricular pulsations sometimes you can see point of maximal impulse that it will actually be visible on someone who does not have musculature or someone who is very thin and cachetic next is to palpate with the pads of your fingers and multiple number of different areas in the patient's right sternal board further. Then moving to the left sternal border at the second intercostal space and on the left side of your finger down from the second intercostal down to the third and fourth and the fifth and all the while for the thrills that may have hips or lips which are pulsations the impulses will bring your hand like lift in the fingers and fill the right sternal border second intercostal that's the aortic the aortic and then the pulmonic area which is the second intercostal space on the left sternal border and then walk your fingers down in the third or third fifth and then move over the mid clavicular which is the fifth intercostal space um, and laterally the mid clavicular line and it will feel it for the point of the maximal impulse this is the apex of the heart here you should hear the pulsation and the ventricle and you should kind of come up like with your top of your finger if you can feel it you can have the patient lay on his, on his left side and that will bring the impulse in a little bit again just you can feel the impulse and have the patient come down on his back okay can you try and so there like you can feel you can actually so that is the palpation of the heart so the next will be the next step will be the auscultation of the cardiac we are going to auscultate the areas that we we palpated earlier starting with the diaphragm and then move to the bell do the same motions over to the second intercostal space on the right and to the left and then down to the herbs point which is the herbs point obviously that of inch by inch down to the third fourth fifth then over towards the mitral valve which is the apex of the heart and the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line all the while while you are listening for murmurs you are also listening for s1 s2 any sounds like s3 s4 or any split s2 can be abnormal a normal S2 is pronounced when the patient is inhaling. Try to inhale. Okay, you might hear a split S2, which is the sound of pulmonic and aortic valve closing separately. Usually they close together to form an S2. If there is a little bit of a split, there should because of the pressure of the lungs when you take a deep breath and they will each close slightly. You will hear it as the two separate beats of the one solid beat. So now, Aiden, uh, now Kai, would you be able? Uh, can you sit up? 
upright, I will do the same. I will listen to all those parts that I palpated earlier. So this way, just sit, um, sit upright. Okay, so while I'm listening upright, I'm going to pay attention to the herbs point to the left intercostal space and the third and fourth down to the mitral space. And then I will have you lean forward so I can listen again for the soft against the efficiency murmurs that may be apparent only when you're leaning forward. <coughs> so that concludes the cardiovascular examination. Now we will proceed to the peripheral vascular examination. So Kai, can you lay down? So we're going to start with the abdomen. So again, when we're doing assessment, we're going to start with in, uh, to inspect the abdomen first for your tick pulsations, which is a lot of times you will be able to see with Kai here. You can't really see it because patients get too much muscles, but in some people who have more central adiposity, you won't be able to visualize the pulsation, but you should be able to palpate it. Okay, first, Listen to the aortic pulsation and listen for bruits, which are the vascular sounds like turbulence in the blood flows. Listen starting to the umbilicus area and you can always use the, the beds, the bell side of your um, stethoscope because you can um, hear it more clearly. The, be the bell is actually better to listen for vascular sounds than the aorta splits off the iliac and the renal arteries, and you could also listen down to the verification of the iliac and then further to the renal and finally to the femoral, femoral down the inguinal area. So. So some of the, those pulses are actually very palpable. You should be able to palpate the epigastric um, of the stomach. Deep, deeply palpate to the right in the epigastrium, and then you can actually map out how wide it's when you're separating both of your fingers and feeling that pulsation. You can also feel the femoral arteries in the cracks of the thigh and also on the one side of the hip area. So now we're gonna move on to the upper extremities. So first you will, first you will just feel the warmth of the arm, the hand, and the extremities. And then you're gonna do both sides. Um, just feeling for warmth, And then of course, after that, you're gonna go to the hand and you will test the capillary feel. <coughs> so you will just like pinch it for a couple, for a few seconds. And then you will see that when you release it, it will suddenly like turn to pinkish, pale to pinkish. Okay. So next we're gonna be feeling the pulses. So uh, we're gonna do the radial pulse which is like a proximal to that, a proximal to that um, thumb. That's the radial pulse. And then we're gonna do the brachial radial pulse, which you can also check on the other side. Okay, and then, 
Next is we're gonna go we're gonna go um, on the lower extremity. So we're gonna do the the same step. We're gonna we're gonna feel for the warmth of the whole extremity. Looking for edema, especially around the ankle area. So press the fingers in the um, on your ankle and then your feet. Look for any depressions as your fingers finger leave the areas that you're palpating. Assess the popliteal pulse. You can do this by cupping your fingers around the back of the knee and slightly flexing the knee. And you can really dig your fingers into the popliteal fossa at the back of the knee. Always use both hands when your and fingers touch, move, and slightly above the half inch of that time. Eventually, feel the pulse, and then the dorsalis, pedis, the anterior, and the, is around the medial malleolus. Malleolus. So the last part of the vascular assessment is what we call the Homan's sign. It is very non-specific um, and it's not used as a whole time, a lot of time in the clinical practice today. It is important to know to rule that that to rule in and rule out DVT. It helps you to make your mind up clinically if you need to order more diagnostic tests. So in order for you to assess the Holman sign, um, you will have the patient's um, dorsiflexion of the foot and palpation of the calf. So dorsiflexion and then palpate the, pop, the, the calf. And then if it's like tender and if the patient complains of any pain, um, then that is a sign of a positive Holman's sign. So that's when you should probably order more, more diagnostic tests to rule out um, DVT. So that concludes the peripheral, vascular, and cardiovascular examination. Thank you. Okay, come on, let's go.